Hello, I'm going to be introducing my set of videos relevant to the Edexcel GCSE Computer Science Paper 2 and just going through how this Paper 2 works because it is the slightly more interesting uh, exam of the two. Um, it's worth exactly the same amount of marks and overall percentage as Paper 1. But unlike Paper 1, it is a exam on the computer and so it will be a little bit different to all of your other subjects most likely. And the name of it formally is Application of Computational Thinking and the word application is definitely relevant here because you are actually doing the programming live in the exam. Now, paper one does have programming in. You might get a trace term, you might have to write some pseudocode and answer questions on programming theory. Paper two is just the application of this directly. And so this will dictate how you prepare for it and it will be quite different from paper one um, in some ways because on paper there is less to prepare for. You haven't got such a long, 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 long list of topics as you do for paper one. Um, here is what it is. Uh, topic six has got a fair few subtopics, but a lot of them are actually from paper one as well. And when you are asked to actually write code, it's going to be in Python version three. Um, so the latest version of Python is assessed in this paper, not any other language. And unlike paper one, which has kind of recollection of theory, this time it is just applying the theory when you are programming, as well as these four buzzwords used in all the computer science specifications about dealing with code. So designing is where you're kind of decomposing and trying to figure out how to find an efficient method. Programming is actually implementing this algorithm. Evaluating is looking at what's good, what's bad in the code. And refining is really adapting the code. So these four words are just encompassed in writing code in the exam. So there are two command words which are only going to be used in paper two. The, these are write and amend. And so all of the content, all of these buzzwords fall under these two command words in the question. If it says write, you're going to add some brand new code. If it says amend, you're going to change, possibly delete, possibly improve some of the code they will give you. Edexcel have said there are going to be six questions in paper two, which are going to range from five up to 15 marks. Unlike paper one, there are not going to be lots and lots of parts within each of these big questions, but it's not all or nothing. You can still gain marks just from doing bits like good design, adding comments, etc. But I'll leave more specifics of the exam until my walkthrough video, which will be in the playlist. But just a bit of logistics, because even if you're watching this ages away from your real exam, I think having in your head clearly what's going to happen when you walk into that exam room is really useful. So in the exam, you're going to be provided with three main things. First of all, the actual exam booklet, which will be printed out like every exam you have. You will not be writing in this exam booklet to put your answers because all of the answers are done on the computer. Although you can bring in a pen to jot down some stuff on this paper they give you. You're going to get also an important document called the PLS, which stands for Programming Language Subset. This is effectively what the people in charge of the Edexcel course have decided is going to be needed for the exam. So these are all the Python constructs and functions and methods and techniques which are needed to answer the questions in the paper. Now you, you're likely going to have learned more than this subset, hence the word subset, um, but ultimately they're not going to assess you on anything outside of this document, even though you can use it in your answers if you want to. So we'll get this both with your paper copy and also there'll be a copy on your computer as well. Now this document you can see ahead of time and you must be studying this in a decent amount of detail. The exam booklet, of course, is unknown to you until the day. Um, this is a, a picture of the uh, front cover of the PLS. And the other unknown will be, of course, actual Python files. When you're writing code, when you are amending code, They'll give you files to work with and possibly what they call data files, which are going to effectively just be text files, which might be used in certain questions. Now, the actual computer you're going to use in the exam, you might know the exact room it's going to be in and the exact setup. I'd encourage you to make use of any mock exams to familiarize yourself and also ask your teacher, ask the IT staff, how is it going to be set up? Am I going to have two monitors? Am I going to have a keyboard and a mouse? Is it going to be a, an old laptop? Hopefully they'll give you a nice setup. The virtual computer itself will not use your normal account. It'll be a locked account only available for this exam window. You can't have access to the internet, so you can't look stuff up, although you can look up within the PLS. 
You're going to, of course, have a Python IDE installed. The IDE is the program you used to write for Python code. Make sure you know what this is ahead of time. Get it on your own computer at home if you're able to, to practice using it. And some of the more useful tools, like debugging tools, you could try and learn ahead of time. Make sure you've got line numbers, because it might in the exam say, I'll go to line 17. And if you don't know how to get those up in your IDE, that would obviously be a problem. And on the computer, there are going to be two folders, at least. One called completed coding and one called student coding. The files they give you are going to go in the student coding folder. And as you complete your answers, you put them in the completed coding folder. So you might have to make it yourself at the start. It might be provided to you. Try and find that out before you actually walk into the real exam. Now, how I'd recommend you approach this, I'm going to leave for my walkthrough video because I've got a lot to say about keeping organized, keeping cool in the actual exam. But these are kind of the high level logistics of it. Now, if I can talk quickly about how you might get ready for paper two, because it is obviously different to paper one. Paper one is pretty standard, just sat in front of your textbook, sat in front of my videos, potentially uh, what, going through all the content. Paper two is different because we're doing it in a much more applied sense. But still, there is a topic list. There is a specification. I've got videos on these concepts. Go through it. Check your familiar. There might be certain words, certain terms you've completely forgotten and they could throw you in the exam situation. But ultimately it's a case of, are you able to actually convert the tools and concepts and functions given in both the spec and the PLS into Python? So if it says to use this string handling technique in Python, can you actually use it yourself? So ultimately it's gonna be a case of you practicing problems using the techniques listed on the PLS. And you might be able to think up questions yourself or think up little problems to solve yourself, but there are resources which give you tasks and I'm sure your teacher will give you tasks to practice as well. But ultimately, practice as much as you can ahead of time, although clearly you can learn Python and you can learn different techniques fairly quickly. It's not like learning a brand new spoken language which might take years. You can pick up Python in a few hours. It's just a practicing is done over a longer period of time, of course. Now, unlike the very long playlist for paper one, my videos are a little bit different for paper two. I do have a paper two playlist, which does cover the terms and concepts you need. A fair bit overlaps with paper one, and so you might have watched some of it already by the time you go into your paper two exam. Um, but clearly the key focus is on Python programming. And I do have more videos on Python itself, which covers the vast majority of the PLS. The PLS is quite extensive, as you would expect but all of the key areas are in this playlist. There'll be a link in the description. And also there are other resources. So if I can plug another thing I've done, there's a CGP book I co-wrote and it has lots of problems, lots of content on Python. There are other books available. There's an official textbook, which looks decent to me. Getting some questions and practicing these is going to be really useful for paper two. I'd also suggest mocks. If you've got one or two mocks you're doing at school, take these seriously because in your other subjects, you have lots of chances to get used to being in a big exam hall doing real-ish exam papers. But you've kind of got one shot to do this on-screen exam. And so if you've got semi-realistic mocks, which you've prepared for and taken seriously and are treating like they're real, that's gonna be perfect preparation. The fear is if you've sort of not really tried in the mock, you haven't taken it seriously, you've kind of looked up the answers from last year, well, you're kind of blown your chance to have a real, a realistic practice. So take all the chances you can to have a real go at this and do that practice and it will go absolutely fine, I'm sure. So best of luck getting ready for paper two and sitting it when you actually have a chance to.